Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. I was recently working with Great Harbour Trawler Yachts filming one of their brokerage listings when they asked if I wanted to pop along and check out this 2024 Great Harbour N37. This one's not yet 100% complete, she's only recently just touched the water uh, from being delivered on road from their factory in Gainesville. But she's around 90-95% complete and she's currently going through final commissioning. But I still couldn't resist jumping on board with the GoPro and sharing the video with you all. So this one measures in just under 37 feet in length. She's got a beam of just under 16 feet and a draft of just under 3 feet. These boats are semi-custom but in general you're looking at 500 gallons of fuel, 300 gallons of water and 100 gallons of holding tank capacity. They're typically powered by twin Yanmar 54 horsepower diesel engines and at around 7.5 knots you should expect a range of around 1800 nautical miles. On the bow you'll notice we've actually got two anchors and two windlasses. These can be operated from the bow itself, but they can also be operated from both a lower helm and a flybridge. And as I pan round you'll see we've got storage options in front of the windows, which is great for your bow lines, window covers, things like that. And although this one's not yet complete with all the framework and canopies and things, this one is capable of doing a great loop. And for a boat of this size, I love how easy it is walking along the deck. She's got great deck space, but great handholds as well. And then as I make my way to the stern, I like the fact there's as much space in the aft cockpit. You also have that extended bathing platform. It's got a massive board and ladder mounted to it too. It's easy enough climbing up onto the flybridge, and I'm glad that it is because your friends and family are going to want to be up here with you while you're cruising. You're probably going to fit, I would say, eight adults up here. You've got three on either side. You've obviously got the helm seat and it's still to be installed and then you've got the seat either side of the helm. And because this was designed for cruising from up here, she's got the full bank of electronics, your multifunction display. Your... But for ease of docking, as well as being twin screw, this one is equipped with a bow thruster. And that space that you see over the back of the flybridge, that's where you're typically going to keep the tender. There'll be a deck crane mounted on here for easier launch and retrieval. But you can actually have the N37 without a flybridge as well as an additional option. Once you step inside, that's when you really see the Great Harbour come to life. Now, as I mentioned, this one's not 100% complete, but look how much seating you have, look how much visibility you have. Almost all the windows are opening so you get extra ventilation. I love the woodwork that's in here and I certainly love the headroom. As are designed for liveaboard or extended cruising, storage is always a key factor. And they've got storage underneath the seats and they've all got that push button lock mechanism so none of the drawers and cabinets open while the boat's underway. Being semi-custom this one's actually being built out so that it's got a drinks cabinet but you typically don't have this and then that bench seat actually becomes a watch berth. And on the port side for the saloon that table actually raises and lowers but you can actually lower this down and it becomes an additional double berth. And you can also extend the leaves out on the table, whether you're having meals and snacks, or whether you're using it as the berth. Now when you're working with Great Harbour, you can specify the different colours of the wood finish, the different fabric materials, even right down to more basic things, the blinds and coverings for the windows, they've got all different custom options for those as well. I doubt there's two of these boats the same. Moving forward, you've got a great navigation station on the port side. But then you've got a fantastic helm for long-term cruising. You get twin multifunction displays. You get your VHF, your AIS, full engine instrumentation. Again, it's got bow thruster controls. And they also do a great job where all of the framework for the helm folds down. You can see that long hinge. And that way it's easy to upgrade the electronics at a later date if you ever wanted to. Obviously buying brand new you shouldn't have that concern, but 5, 10, 15 years down the road I'm sure you're going to want to upgrade those electronics at some point. She does have door access to the side deck, which I think is great, especially if you're single-handed cruising. And then for entertainment purposes, if you're at Anchor or in the marina, you've got a massive drop-down TV as well. It's securely locked in place while the boat's underway. And before moving forward, there's also a hatch that is in the saloon right as you come through the door and this one leads right down into the storage hold. The amount of space down here is incredible. I've actually been on Great Harbours where they've got things like folding bicycles down here. You could put inflatable tenders but you could also put a bunch of dry food, canned goods, things like that as well. 
Moving further forward, it's only a few short steps down and it takes you to the galley. And stepping into the galley feels like you're stepping into a kitchen and I mean that in a good way. These are all full size household appliances you're going to have in here. So you get your full size, full height fridge freezer. You get a ton of countertop space. Look at all the different storage drawers, lockers and cabinets. You got opening portholes which is great for both light and ventilation. You get the electric stove top and then you've got the convection microwave oven. We even have a dishwasher in here too. And there's just so much space in this area that it doesn't feel like you're hammed in and claustrophobic and things like that. That You can easily spend time here preparing your favourite meals for everyone on board. And if we make our way to the bow, that's where you're going to find the owner's stateroom. This has got a large island berth, easily accessible on either side. Again, you've got more than ample storage space throughout. You've got opening portholes on either side, but you've also got that massive overhead hatch. And we even have additional storage options below the bed, including those four storage drawers that slide in and out with a push button mechanism. But you can also lift the mattress, and there's more storage options there. And then on the bulkhead, you've also got access to the anchor locker. As we head back down the boat, you'll see we've got the heads compartment. This is on the port side of the yacht. And I like the fact that the toilet and the shower is separate. You've got your large mirror as well and plenty of storage for toiletries and personal belongings. And heading aft again, next up we've got the guest cabin. This one's got a large double bed in here, like the storage underneath the bed. We also have that opening porthole window. Again, more light and ventilation coming through. And in some of the Great Harbour yachts, because they are semi-custom, I've seen it in before where sometimes the guest cabin gets converted and they turn it into like a work from home office situation. All depends on what your needs and desires are. But in here, this one does have a door that leads straight into the engine room. When last we were in a 37 foot boat that's got full walk-in engine room access like this. There's so much space down here for storage. They've also got a workbench built in here. And you can have this hooked up so that all the engine room, not only you can have monitoring in place from things like temperature gauges and things, but you can also have this hooked up with cameras as well plenty of room down here not only for your day-to-day -day maintenance tasks but there's also plenty of room for your engine spares as well and when buying a boat like this great harbour work with you it'll give you some sort of training so that that way you know how to properly maintain the boat as well as how to handle the boat and although this yacht's not 100% finished you can already see the pay attention to detail when it comes to cable management all your fuel and oil water separators how easily accessible those are and look how clean and dry the bilges are for her to be in the water already. The bilges are so clean you can actually use them as additional storage as well. And if you open the doors that's in front of that island in the galley, you'll see that this one's actually also equipped with full laundry facilities. It's got a built-in washer dryer. It's a very self-sufficient boat that's definitely intended for long-term cruising. And would be great for island hopping around the Caribbean. Or for tackling something like the Great Loop. I'd like to thank Joe and Eric for the opportunity to come on board and check this one out. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. You can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.